some hour and a half ago. We're going to the book of 1 Kings in the neighborhood of where we were last week, but we're going to the 18th chapter, say amen. amen. And we're just going to pull one verse of scripture out of that 18th chapter. One verse out of the 18th chapter, but if it's okay with the Lord, I know it's okay with you. We're going to preach more than that one verse, but go to 1 Kings 18, in 21, a very familiar passage of scripture, a very familiar passage of scripture. Yeah. 1 Kings 18 and 21, we're going to ask whether you're at home or here with us to rise to honor God's word as we read just one verse of scripture. One verse of scripture out of the 18th chapter, verse 21. If you can't find it, it's on the screens behind me. Yes, and it says, And Elijah came uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. unto all the people uh -huh. yes, sir. Yes, and said, How long yes, halt ye between two opinions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elijah came unto all, all the people, the people. Yes, all the people. with this very pressing question. How long halt ye between two opinions? <laughs> yes. If the Lord mm -hmm. be God, yes. follow him. Yes. But if Baal, then follow him. Yes. The text closed <laughs> with these seven words. Mm -hmm. And the people answered him not a word. Excuse me, it was eight words. And the people answered him not a word. Not a word. Gracious God our Father, we stop now. We have labored before you, O oh God, to extract from you the pearls of wisdom the nuggets of life from this word to drop off into the hearts of your people. But, oh God, if they don't unstop their ears, this word would not find residency in their heart. And in the time of testing and trying, oh God, they will not have what they need to make it through. So, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would arrest any and all things, be they carnal or demonic, they come against your word in this moment, O oh God. God, we pray with the power and the might of an open heaven that you receive the prayer of your man, sir. That these people would open up receptive places and reservoirs where they may find the springboard of life, O oh God. Move now, O oh God, and deposit. We pray in the name of Jesus that we won't be distracted with food and foolishness, friends and foes, but we will sink our way into a place where your word can touch. Holy Spirit, have your way, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare it settled in heaven, and we are serving here on earth. Now, God, we stand to declare that the grass wither, the flower fades. But the word of God is everlasting. Now, Lord, let the meditation of my heart, the time of my study, be acceptable in thy sight. Holy Spirit, stand in the gap where I am missing, that your people may receive what thus saith the Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long? Halt ye yes, sir. between two opinions. If the Lord God, if the Lord mm. be God, mm -hmm. follow him. Yeah, right. I wish he'd have just stopped there. Mm -hmm. But he gave us choices to make. He says, but if Baal, if Baal. that pagan God, mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Then follow him. Right, right. And the people answered him not a, word. not a word. 
after a three-year hiatus hiding away, and we explored that last week, he went to hid. God sent him to speak to Ahab, and he spoke to Ahab, declaring there will be no rain. Then God took him off the scene and hid him away, tucked him away, and watched this for three years. Somebody know that's the full extent of Jesus' ministry, three years. He takes his manservant, puts him away for three years. First, he takes him down by the brook, you know, the brook at Cherith where he has ravens to feed him. When the brook dries up, he moves him. He sends a heavenly moving van. Yes, sir. Takes him away from the brook at Cherith and drops him off by command at a widow woman's house. Yes, and we talked about that woman on Mother's Day. Yes. We yes. talked about how godly women will show up in some strange situation. Yes. Yes. We talked about that last week. But we even, if you drop down in the text, you'll find out that her son dies. Yes, but the man of God even has a word for a dying situation. I need ten of y'all to stay. Oh, it's only ten. I need all y'all to stay woke. Then. I want you to understand that God has a word that can be served up in a dying situation for you to live. The boy dies, but the man of God stretches out over him. Chantel will come three times, and he raised up. There's something about threes in God. God shows up. Uh, Y'all ain't going to pray with me. I preach to myself today. I need some help in this situation. But, but, but God allows the boy to live. Then God moves in, and he gives more instructions to the man of God. He, 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 he appears, when he reappears after this three-year hiatus, he's back in front of King Ahab. And he announces that, that, that the drought is coming to an end, that the dry area is coming to an end. Somebody's praying and waiting for the dry time of this pandemic to come to an end. Amen. The man of God has dedicated himself to do what thus saith the Lord. He leaves Ahab the first time, watch this, uh -huh. as a man of faith. Yes, but he comes back as a man of God. Y'all catch this in a minute. See, when you have faith to move, God will promote you for the move. Some of y'all will catch this. Some of y'all stuck. You, you'll see us get promoted. That'll be the jealous group. But the ones that shout, them the ones that's on the way to their next move. I want you to know my next move will be my best move. Holler at your boy one time. I want you to understand that when God is directing your path, that your next move is your best move. Some of y'all stuck on your last move. That's why you don't move at all. But I, I, I digress away from that. He is a man wholly now dedicated to the Lord God. As he returns to the public eye, something strange occurs, or maybe it isn't so strange. If, if you've read the top part of this text, you'll find out Elijah's first encounter is with a fellow believer. I'm, I'm not in the where I'm going, but I'm trying to help a few of y'all to stay on the road till we get there. When, when, when he gets back, from his hiatus, the first person he engages is a fellow believer, but really he's a disguise because he's really a hater. I want some of you to know that when you get back, there will be some folk they may look like believers, but but Obadiah, let me get to Obadiah so y'all put both guys there. Obadiah is not a believer, he's a hater. Obadiah thought that he was going to take the place of the one that God was promoting. See, you ain't always got to be on the scene. God sometimes is in the background preparing the scene for you. He chose you to show up, and he's going to let you be the star of the scene. And it was just a placeholder in the way. Quit trying to push folk out the way. God will move them in his own time. I gave that to you free. That, that ain't cost you nothing. That's a freebie on the way to the text. Obadiah is a hater. He's sitting there acting like he's a follower of a God, but he's really trying to fill his pockets. So see, that's the reason I don't get upset with some of these, well, Obadiahs that are around today. 
They, they want to go on Facebook and the internet because they don't have a place to preach and then get mad at those who still got a place to preach. They, they, they want to tell you how to run the house that God has anointed and appointed you to build. I don't try to run no man's building. I take 24-7 trying to run my own. Y'all got to quit letting folk because they got a Facebook and a phone act like they a pastor and a preacher. Only God anoints pastor and places them to be preacher. Only only God can do that. Quit letting everybody with a phone sideways on the computer. Can't even straighten it up and look right. Act like they preaching to somebody. Everybody can't tell me nothing. I'm talking to some of y'all that's eavesdropping on the page. I heard you preaching my message, but God gave it to me first. It ain't mine. Take it and run with it. If you can do a better job, I'll at the end of it, but you can't preach it up in here. God lets Obadiah know you was just there. I didn't call you. I had you as a placeholder. Some of my sisters, it's a free one for you. That guy that's looking at you, he's a placeholder. You ought to tell him to move on to the real deal. There's a man of God on the way. Don't accept placeholders. Uh, uh, Obadiah. Obadiah is pictured as a mere hireling. That is one who gives lip service to God. But the man of God is the one who gives life service to God. You, you can tell the real deal because they are the ones who give their life to God, not their lips to God. I wish I had help on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, as we are held here, even in real life, between two opinions. Uh -huh. With this COVID-19, yeah. please let me just share for my brothers and sisters in Christ, continue yes, to shelter in place. Yes, God does not move the man of God from sheltering in place until he set the scene for his return. Somebody yes. say amen. Yes. Don't, don't move too fast. Don't, don't run to get your nails done. Yes. Yes, amen. Don't, don't be at the nail shop yeah. <laughs> that leads you to the mortuary. Uh, let, let your hair be a little frizzy if necessary. But don't let a hairdo be your last doo-doo. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't try to get a tattoo. It might cost too much. Sadly, here... There are many Obadiahs in the modern church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. People who talk about being saved and claim to love the Lord. But whose lives they live to deny him and his power and his yeah. presence. Of course, this is where Paul drops his pen to paper uh -huh. and say they having a form of godliness. Yeah. But denying the power thereof. Yeah. Such turn away. He says, quit running with everybody. Yes, the pandemic should help you begin to understand that it's time to isolate and deal with the ones that God has called you to be in the presence of. Yeah. God, God has isolated you and God will insulate you. Yes, will. God will take yes, care will. of you. God will take care of you. Yes, I said God will yes, take will. care of you. God will bless you. God will watch out for you. Somebody say man up in here. Uh, Elijah sends Obadiah to tell Ahab that he has returned. However, he responds by pointing a finger at Elijah and accuses Elijah of trying to kill him. You see, his reverence for the prophet in verse 7 meant nothing. Because by verse 9, he reveals his true character. I want you to know that if you hold on just a little while, folk will show you who they really are. They, 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 they will demonstrate their real personality. They can only hide for so long. I want you to know that as I was looking at this text and God was speaking to me, and I asked him, what do we tag this because some folk only remember the tag and not the whole message. So let me see if I can make it interesting enough that you give me at least 30 minutes. We are moving, say moving. 
from dilemma. We are moving from dilemma to decision. We are moving from dilemma to decision. Let me see if I can help you out in here. I, I, I want to suggest for your consideration that there are some folk who love chaos. I, I want to suggest there are some folk who dwell their best in chaotic situations. They love dilemma. They, they love the foolishness that goes on behind the scenes. They, they love always to keep the drama going. If it ain't no baby mama drama, they'll create their own drama. Somebody say amen. They love drama. They are drama queens and drama kings. And they have little drama princesses and princes. Their children even love drama. Uh, they, they, they have, for the most part, no real relationship with the God of heaven. These people here, they, they, they have become acclimated, accustomed to having drama in their life. These people in the text, we find them as people who have now migrated away from God to the drama. Uh, it happens in, in the Bible. It happens in the church. It yeah. happens in your house. It happens in my house. And guess what? Sometimes it happened in my life. There have been times that I found myself bringing the drama. When, when it was too quiet at the household, I found stuff to... Y'all looking at me funny. Some of y'all... In this passage, things are about to come to a head. On, on one hand, there's Ahab and Jezebel, the prophets and priests of Baal. On the other, there is Jehovah and Elijah. The odds may look stacked in the favor of evil, but Elijah soon finds out that God is greater than a whole crowd of folk around uh, he, he, he doesn't have the text laying in front of him, but somebody remember the text said, greater is he that is within me than they that's around me. You, you ought to be able to understand that God by himself is a majority. As, as, as we take a look at this text moving from dilemma to decision, Let's drop off in the text and see if we can get some help. In verse 21a, and that's where it says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long shall you halt between two opinions? Here you see the waywardness of the people. The waywardness of the people. Yeah. They had lost their way. Uh -huh. They had forgot how good God had been to them. Somebody ought to say man up in here. Yeah. There are times that we forget how good God has been to us. We forget that it was God that brought me through. When we get on the other side, we ride back and start acting like we made it on our own. They had become wayward because they forgot who brought them through. They forgot about their ancestors that stood at the Red Sea with mountains on both sides and Pharaoh's army coming. They forgot it was God who through the nostril opened up the Red Sea. Some of us are Afrocentric people People. We have forgotten about the middle passage. We forgot about Jim Crow. We forgot about slavery. We forgot about Rosa Parks. We forgot about how many paid the price for you to sit at home watching big screen TV. Forgot about all the people who couldn't so that you can and you still don't. Some of us sitting up complaining about a president and didn't even cast a vote. Some of us sitting up angry about stuff and they did nothing to change it. But, but they lost their way. They forgot how good God has been to them. Somebody has forgotten up in here that it was God who brought you through. It was God that was on your side. It was God that kept that man from killing you. It was God that you wasn't in prison. It was God that 
that you didn't go to jail for the things you've done. It was God that let you make it through the intersection. It was God that blessed you. It was God that fed you. Somebody ought to say amen up in here. I'm glad that Elijah didn't forget. It was God that fed me. He didn't give too much to the raven. He didn't give much too much to the widow. He said that God took care of me. These people had lost their way. And every time we lose our way, God sends a man to bring us back into a way with him. These people had fallen along the way. They had fallen out of the love of God that loved them in spite of it. When we have pastors attacking one another about faith and facts and fiction. We ought to begin to believe that God is not pleased with that behavior. Yeah. How are you going to cut my grass and you got weeds in yours? Yeah. That part. Yeah. Uh, however, the Lord said that things would be this way. Yeah. He let us know in 1 Timothy. He says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Yeah. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's in your Bible if you didn't tear it out. Then we have these denominational wars that's still going on. We have a common enemy called sin, but we're still fighting within denominations. Wrestling with issues like abortion and homosexuality. Wrestling with issues that God settled with his word. And now we've unsettled it and trying to create gray areas where God said, change not one jot or tittle of my word. These people had lost their way. And if I look around today, I find that we have lost our way also. But God said, man of God, who was standing behind my sacred desk, he said, woe unto the pastor that scatters my sheep. Be careful because you don't have sheep. That all of this belongs to the Lord. Their waywardness leads to the warning. It's in your Bible and it says the warning comes after he talks about their waywardness. In the B clause of verse 21 it said, if the Lord be God. Yeah. Yeah. Follow him. Yeah. Yeah. But if Baal, then follow him. That's the warning. Yeah. God gives his people a warning. He gives them a succinct sound from the trumpet of life. He lets them know you have a choice to make. You can follow God. That's the reason he put the preposition if there. Yes, that means you get to set the condition. Yes, if the Lord be God. If the Lord be God, that's a condition, it's a challenge, it's a charge on each one of us. You have to begin to understand and make a decision, who are you going to follow? Some of us say, well, I would never follow Baal, but Baal comes in a lot of forms. Those little gods show up as jobs, friends, family. Trying to protect things that God told you to let go of. Elijah's admonition is direct and to the point. He tells them that they have to make a choice. Elijah sees that they are a compromising people. We are people who have a compromising spirit. We compromise things that we should. The Lord challenged me some eight weeks ago. And he asked me three times, Hodge, do you love me? And as I began to well up with tears, as I said, Lord, I love you. Yeah. And when I pulled into the back of the church, Sister Hodge and I had made a decision to ride by myself. And he told me three things. He says, if you love me, it will not be comfortable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. If you're going to love God, it's not going to be no. comfortable. And then he says, it can't be casual. Right. He says, I'm not a easy pickup. Yes, oh, yes. oh, yes. He says, if you're going to love me, yes, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross yes. and follow me. He says, it won't be 
comfortable, won't be casual, it must be committed. If you're going to love God, there are some things you got to let go of, child of God. It's hard to carry your cross when you're holding on to some other stuff. So he gives them the warning. Matthew gives the warning in 6 and 24. He says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. He says, you cannot serve God and man. We need the same spiritual fortitude that we find here to take a real committed look at your personal life. How much praying are you doing? How much are you studying the word of God? How much real service are you preparing for? So when the pandemic is over and you are free to come out, how prepared will you be to return to your place of worship? What are you doing to get ready when he releases you? These, these are the questions. And the next thing I see, I, I, I see the waywardness leads to the warning, but watch their response. It's in verse 21, the closing part. It says, and these are their words. It was their waywardness, their warning, and their words. And the people answered him, not a word. Amen. Not a word. And the people answered him, not a word. No, no, notice the response, silence. One of the eeriest things in the church is when the church goes silent. Amen. That's the truth. When the church has no response. I was watching pastors, some leaders uh, that Dr. R.A. Vernon had on, and he had some of the most prolific leaders in the modern church, these mega church pastors. And they said the most difficult thing they deal with now is a quiet church. Yes, that there is no response from the people. Mm -hmm. They may be sending up hearts and making noise on Facebook, yeah. but it's quiet oh, in the Lord, church. Lord. In a time when the church needs to have a voice, yes, oh, yes. Oh, it has grown quiet yes, yes. <laughs> in the church. Yes. When there are no amens, when the truth comes. It's grown quiet in the church. When there are no prayers being prayed on the prayer line. Oh, y'all mad at me. It's grown quiet in the church. When there are no testimonies on testimonial service. It's grown quiet in the church. The voice of the church needs to be more resounding and resilient now yes, yes. than ever. Yes. The dilemma of the people, the dilemma of the people of God, mm -hmm. yes, and it ends with them standing silent. Standing silent. Let's see if we can get beyond this 21st verse. Verses 25 picks up with the demonstration of the power of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the dilemma of the people of God is present, how do we eradicate it? Uh, yes, By the demonstration of the power of God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and watch what God does first. The first thing he does in verse 29, you can look in your Bibles, we'll slow down. God has to break down your false gods. Jesus. He has to take the cover off of false gods to reveal that they are powerless. Mm -hmm. The first thing he does, he shows the futility <laughs> of following Baal. He shows the futility of placing false gods above him. I, I'm going to read the text, give you a couple points, and I'm going to leave you alone, because some of y'all, you already got it. Mm -hmm. You know the false god that you've placed ahead of yes, yes. the real god. Watch this. Verse 29 says, And it came to pass at midday. When midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice or any answer nor 
any that regard. Right. It shows the futility of pressing forward to follow yes, sir. Yeah. a false god. Yes. The showdown has been going on all day long. The prophets of Baal have prayed, cried. They cut themselves. They, they, they pled for their God to show up. And watch what the text said. He never utters a single word. Yeah. He never moves in their favor. Somebody know what I'm talking about? You put that woman, that man, that boy, that girl, that job, that car, that house as a false God. And when you needed them most, they turned their backs and left you. Yeah. Oh, y'all can get quiet on me. I'm all up in your business right now. Yeah. You, you know that be true. The folk we held up are the ones that pushed us down. Say amen if you hear. They're the ones that didn't show up when we needed them. When we needed them most, they were nowhere around. Here are these 450 prophets. They hollering and shouting. They, they running in circles. They cutting themselves. They, they hoping that something happened and not anything happened. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You did all you could for that rascal. And when you needed them, they turned their back on you. Walked out and left you. Got a new job and a new address. Won't even give you their phone number. Holler at your boy one time. You know it's true. I done helped some folk as soon as they couldn't even walk. They lived away. Oh, the futility of following after false God. Watch this, watch this. All day long, they're, 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 they're shouting for him. You, you, you know how we are. We love it. We, we go to go take them to baseball games. Don't come to church. Take them to football games. Don't come to church. Take them to this, to ballerina class. Take them to stand on one toe and peer away and all of this. And they peer away right out the door. Don't come back in the church. We done supported them. Bought a little tutu. And they show you they little tutu when they leaving up out of here. But God said that he still going to have a where he undresses, shows you these are false gods. They will never amount to a hill of being. Say man up in here. The showdown happened, yet they don't receive as much as a small voice. They, you don't even get an email, a text message. They don't even send you a picture. They blocked you on their Facebook. They don't let you get on the ground with y'all mad at me. They don't even Snapchat you anymore. They kick dust and left rocks at your house and let you know I'm up and out of here. But it's all right. Tell them, say bye-bye. It's time to let go of some false God. It's time to quit moving in futility. It's time to, to quit chasing after things that's never going to mount up to anything. Watch this, watch this. Uh, the the, the New Living Translation says it this way about verse 27. About noontime, Elijah began making fun of him. You know, the man of God said, I don't put up with this long enough. He, he started making fun of them false God. And look what he says. You'll have to shout louder. He said, you got to wake him up. Yeah, wake him up. For surely he is God with a little G. Perhaps he's daydreaming. Yeah. See, they don't have a God who neither sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, he, he got real ugly with him with the next one. He said maybe he's relieving himself. Or maybe he's away on a trip or asleep and needs you to wake him up. I'm not going to be ugly like Elijah. I'm just going to say thank God that we don't have to stay in the futility. The next point that I have the futility of following Baal, following a false god, reinforces the reason you need to have the faith of this prophet. Faith will stop you from following foolishness. It's right there in verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering, of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham. He only says these few words. Sixty full words and God moved. Watch his prayer. 
He says this prayer and things change. God is a God that you don't have to call all day long. He just have to utter 64 words. Some of you have been calling on folk too long and you see the futility. But here's Elijah saying, let me show you the faithfulness. He says, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day. Somebody ought to say this day. That thou art God of Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Somebody ought to know it pays off to follow God. It pays off to be in the company of a mighty God. And oh, what a mighty God he is. When futility ends, faithfulness can begin. The faith of the prophet. He lets us know after the prophets of Baal had finished all of their shenanigans and all of their foolishness, Elijah steps forward and he just utters those 64 words. I want you to take them to prayer with you. 64 little words. All you got to say is, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel let it be known this day that thou art the God of Anthony <laughs> I'm glad that I can make this thing personal and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word you are the same man if you're ready to move from being futile with your prayers and foolish with your behavior you ought to move to a place called faith faith means f forsaking a all i i that forsaking all i trust him Faith means forsaking all, I trust him. Faith means forsaking all, I trust him. If you're going to move from being futile, quit following folk and say I'm forsaking everything and I trust him. It's time that the church, if nobody else in this corona season can be found faithful, you ought to be found faithful in a season like this. Uh, the futility of following Baal reinforces the faith of the prophet because, watch this, it releases the faithfulness of the Lord. I'm almost through. That's the last point of God's demonstration that he is a faithful God. It, it, it would be great if we just talked about his power. We know he has all power. We can talk about that he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. But in a time like this, we need to see the faithfulness of the Lord. Yeah. Verse 38 says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was yeah. in the trench. Yeah. Ezekiel has shown you that's power, yeah. but he's also letting us know that he's faithful. Yeah. I want to go back and pull, not, not from Ezekiel, uh, 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 from Elijah, but I want to pull from Ezekiel, from Lamentations, from Jeremiah, I want to pull this, Lamentations 3. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassions. Fail not. I said, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. The text then says, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The faithfulness.
faithfulness of the Lord, the dilemma of God's people, the demonstration of the power of God. Yeah. It leads us to the place where we stand now. There must be the decision of the people of God. Because the dilemma is interrupted by the demonstration, now you're left to make a decision. It's right here in the text. Verse 39 says, when all the people saw it. And that represent they had experienced God in his power. Yes, when you see the movement of God in your life, yes. it should cause you to have a new understanding yes. that the dilemma is not greater than the demonstration. Yes. The dilemma is not greater than the demonstration because of the power that God has shown you. They had experienced the power of God. God's power fell down. Not only did it destroy the sacrifice and consume it, it consumed the whole altar. Then it said it licked up the water. It means that God took and moved on everything that was there. What are you saying, preacher? All of your dilemma. When you watch the demonstration of God and make a decision to attach to him, he'll take care of all of it. Uh, when you were singing it this morning, Sister Ferguson, I put it all in his hand. Some of us, the reason that God won't take care of it, because you won't take your hands off of it. There came a time that I had to take my hands off of my son. And then God moved, and I'm watching him grow up to be a man. I'm waiting till the time that I can go to Kentucky and do the nuptial for my youngest boy. The one that I prayed for the longest. The one that grew up under the admonition of his father. I watched him grow up to be a man. He was in his own dilemma, but I demonstrated that God is faithful. That God is faithful. I wish I had help up in here. You wouldn't have to do so much for your children if you would let them know that God is faithful and he is worthy to be trusted. I'm glad that God is faithful but my Bible said trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You don't like that. I'm glad that my Bible let me know how to get our families together. How to bring our children into a right relationship. Because he said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He says uh, uh, he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast out. Yeah, you might see me down, but I'm on the way up. If I'm down, I'm in a praying posture. I'm going to get it in the text. Y'all missed it. They experienced the power of God. He had answered the prophet with fire. And we know fire represents the Holy Ghost. So when you answer God, he sends an answer. When you pray to God, he sends your answer through the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to say, move, Holy Ghost. You ought to let the Holy Ghost have his way in your life. He'll burn away some of the foolish things. He'll burn away some of the fickle things. He'll burn away some of the things that keep you trapped. You ought to let God have his own way. Let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost fall fresh upon us in this season that we find ourselves in. You ought to be one of the people who say, Lord, by let your spirit fall fresh on me. When you wake up in the morning by the power of God that has stood century over your life, you ought to say, Lord, let your spirit have its way. Watch the text. Not only had they experienced God in power, but they extolled God in prostration. It says they fell on their faces. I ain't got no help up in here. There needs to come a time that you as a member of the church, you as a member of your family, quit going and telling folks. Sometimes just stretch out on your faith. Just lay prostrate before the Lord. Just lay out on God. That's faith right there. When you want to see God Move. Quit calling, Pastor. I got problems of my own. I'm trying to get through this pandemic also. You ought to be able to lay out on God and say, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. 
If not, withdraw thyself from me. Oh, whether shall I go? They extolled. They lifted God up in prostration. They laid down. And when they rose up, the spirit of the living God was upon them. And then my last point. They exalted God in praise. For the Bible says, and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Bible says, they said, the Lord, he is God. You still ain't heard me. Some of y'all, that should be enough to excite some praise in your spirit. That the Lord, he is God. I'm going to say it until you catch it. The Lord, he is God. Slow it down hard. They said the, which isolates him to be the only one. They said Lord, which gave him the leading of them. They said the Lord, and then they said is. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, the Lord is. You ain't got it. Mama would say the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Big Mama would say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom, whom, whom shall I fear? You ought to call on the Lord right now and begin to praise his holy name. The Lord is God and the Lord, he is the God. The people no longer were silent. I wish those folk was here today. They realize that you can't stay silent. They don't have the mirror to look in. Because I can look in the mirror of my life and I can see the dilemma. But I'm glad that I can find the demonstration that the dilemma is sin, but the demonstration is the sun. Oh, preach, boy, I think I will. When sin had me bound, I'm glad that God sent forth his son to be the demonstration. Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, when my dilemma was all about me, I'm glad that demonstrated his love for me for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him that's my demonstration that one Friday they hung him high one Friday they stretched him wide I'm glad you do know the son don't you his name is Jesus. He's a Mary's baby boy. He's Alpha, but he's also Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the bright morning star. He's the good shepherd. You don't hear me? When I'm sick, he's the great physician. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the anchor of my soul. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the rose of Sharon and he's the lily of the valley. You ought to say amen. You don't have a right to be silent. You ought to realize that the decision to redeem God's people, that God made a decision that you was worth it, and he wrapped himself up in an earthen body, walked through 40 and two generations. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, God. I thank God for ending my dilemma. Sin is no longer my enemy because I have son and the Bible says he that has the son oh thank you Lord and thank you God oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and I want you to know that it's time that you ought to say something. 
you ought to say something. I don't know how you just sit here and not say something. Ain't he worth you saying something? Ain't he worth you opening up your mouth? here at this place that you ought to open up your mouth and say something. If God has moved you from dilemma to decision, realizing I need a God like that on my side. I need a God that can bring down the fire from heaven and his Holy Spirit can correct and also can cleanse my life. I need a God like that right now. I need a God that I can depend on. That when the trials of life show up against me, that he will never leave me nor forsake me. I need a God that is not going to judge me unless I die out of his will and then I have judged myself. But if I would just release whatever it is to the Lord today, you can open up your mouth and say something. I remember telling the church that we need to be like children again. And sometimes we need to just hold our hands up and say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I need you. Daddy, forgive me for the things that I've done wrong. Daddy, I'm not worthy. I can't even promise you, Daddy, that I'll never do it again. But Lord, I need you. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. Lord, I need thee. I need thee, Lord. Lord, we're praying for someone right now. Someone under the sound of my weakened voice. Somebody here or out there. I need thee. They're crying out, I need thee. Lord, I went contrary to your will and your way. And Lord, I need thee. Lord, I need to reestablish a relationship with you, oh God. I need you to caress me, God. I thank you, Lord. The word has convicted me. And now I'm ready to be caressed again. Lord, remove from me the stain of my sin. Lord, I come before thee as an empty pitcher before a full and flowing fountain. I come before you as a mischievous child before a faithful father. Lord, just touch me. I feel the demonstration of your power, and now I'm making a decision to put my life back in your hand. Lord, forgive me for yesterday, yester month, yester week, yester year, and God, even forgive me for yester second. And then God, take me back to the place where I first met thee, oh God. I need you, Lord. We're praying for those who are out of the ark of safety, those who have fallen away and lost their way, oh God. Lord, it's no surprise to you. You're extending your hand to them now. I hear the word of God say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. God is extending himself to you. Those of us who are backslidden in the church, God is saying, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man heareth me and let me in, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. You can have the Lord back as your personal savior right now. He's ready to exonerate you and remove all of the sin from you. And then he has two twins he's going to put, for the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We extend to you the right hand of relationship to the Lord. If you're not local, you can find yourself a local pastor who would shepherd you in the ways of the Lord, teaching you what thus saith the Lord. And if you're local and you want to reach out to this church, you can call us at 510 799 4647. Or you can just leave a message on the inbox of the Facebook page. We'll call you. I promise we will. If the Lord let us rise, we'll pray with you and help you find it. 
Bible teaching and a Bible preaching church where you can assemble and assign yourself to the work that God has for you. God bless you and may the Lord keep you. Amen.